trying to get familiar with everything going on here. Welcome to me a little information here I need to do I don't know if my picture is coming in very clearly I've done a restart with my hotspot and I hope that it's going to be working okay this evening we have a nice night with no storms and so I am just believing for the best here of God that God has made available to work on our behalf. Paul said that power is the same power that God exercised in raising Jesus from the dead. You may wonder how that relates to your healing. Well, God has enough power, had enough power, to raise a body that was dead. Your body is not dead yet. And I want you to think about the greatness of a power that raises a dead body. Hallelujah. I want you to think about the greatness of the power that raises a dead body. <coughs> I'm going to pull my computer up a little closer here and see if the picture clears up some. That's a little better. That's better. So let's pray this evening. Father, <laughs> I pray, Father, for that sick one that may tune in to this sweet bedtime story. I pray the prayer for them that Paul prayed for us. I pray that the eyes, Father, of their inward person, the eyes of their understanding, their imagination, their thoughts, would open to behold the power that raised Jesus from the dead. That God is making available to them, for them, and in them. Hallelujah, to quicken our mortal bodies. So, Father, I thank you tonight for your spirit of wisdom and revelation at work, Lord Jesus, in the hearts, the minds, and the bodies. Oh, Father, just as we talk about your power, Lord, I believe that it is flowing at the very mention of it into the bodies of those that are listening, that are beginning to focus their minds, Father, on that power that you want to exert on their behalf. 
Hallelujah. So, Father, I thank you tonight for your word, for your spirit, for wisdom and revelation in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Well, it's telling me now my frame rate is too low, and I have no idea how to fix it right now. So it'll just have to be what it is. <laughs> I am not going to get distracted by natural things when you're in need of spiritual things. In the first story, we looked at Jesus' statement when he foretold his resurrection in John chapter 2, verse 19. Jesus answered, body. Hallelujah. Then we go on to Matthew 28, where we are given an account of Jesus' resurrection in the end of the Sabbath. As it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came the earth to shake. God manifested power that shook the earth at the resurrection of Jesus. He manifested power that rolled the stone away. Let's see. They're still telling me here that I need to do something, but I don't know how to do it still. Well, anyway, I'm really sorry that this screen is not coming out very well today. So anyway, I'm not going to get distracted by all of their little messages they're trying to give me. <laughs> Hallelujah. But just think, we're talking about power. Think about the power that God exerted to cause that earthquake and cause that stone to roll away. And then the angel came and sat on the stone and said to the women, Fear not, I know that you seek Jesus. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. Hallelujah. Then we looked at Peter's sermon on the day of Pentecost. Acts 22 to 32. We're not going to read all of it again this time. I want to go down to verse 29. Peter says, Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God has sworn an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, God would raise up Christ to sit on his throne, he Seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell.
from the dead. In the King James Version, which I'd like to read first, give us a little foundation before we go off into some other versions. In verse 15, Paul begins and he says, Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love to all the saints, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. And this is what he prayed. That the God of our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, would give unto you, put that your hand on yourself and say, Paul's praying for me. I pray that the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ would give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened. That you might know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is his exceeding greatness? What is the exceeding greatness of his power? Exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe. According. Then he goes on to define what kind of power we're talking about. He says it's according to the working of his mighty power. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. And set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion. And every name that is named. Not only in this world but in the world to come. And hath put all things under his feet. And gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Which is his body. The fullness of him. That filleth all in all. Well, it keeps giving me this little thing and I just don't know how to fix it. That's probably why the screen is blurry. Because they want me to up the frames and I can't figure out how to do it. <laughs> anyway, going back to Paul's prayer here. He prayed, Paul prayed for you to know intimately the power that raised Jesus from the dead. That's what heals your physical body. That's what causes sicknesses and diseases to dry up. Hallelujah. Linga de Bizon, the Rabushan, the Rabasan, the Rabasata, Rabashan, the Rabasata. Zangalamanga, the machine, get him in the end, the other of a son, the Rabu, the machine, got a wonder to take it out. Zangalamanga, the Magalamanga, the Magadiming at the end, the Rabashan, the Rabuburiata. Thank you, Father, for giving me strength to stay focused tonight in Jesus' name. So, Again, in Ephesians 1, Paul prayed that you would know and experience and understand the power that raised Jesus from the dead. I want to tell you something. <clears throat> in getting healing for your body, you can't be eating from a dozen different plates. That truth came to me this week in a discussion with someone. We get anxious when we're wanting to see healing manifest in our bodies. 
And so we run to this book and that video, even speaking of the things that I'm sharing with you. That is not good to do. This idea of a bedtime story was given to me particularly by the Lord to help you go to sleep meditating on, the on God's power. And the power that he's talking about is the power that raised Jesus from the dead. Now, he would not have inspired this idea unless he knew that it was a big key to your healing. I've done several videos now, bedtime stories. We're just having a little chat right now between mom and her kids. Because the Lord's even convicted me. He said, you teach the bedtime stories, but then you don't go to sleep thinking about my power. You just think, well, my job is done, and now I'm through for the day, and I can think about whatever I want to think about. So I've been conv getting convicted about it myself. Because the Lord's been telling me, if you don't think about my power, you will never achieve a greater level of power than what you're operating in right now. <clears throat> and I know that to be true. And the Lord inspired this idea because he wants to help you get healed. He wants to fill your imagination. You know, it's interesting. As I went and I did the different, run the different versions of Ephesians 119, which is the verse that says that you would know the power which he wrought in Christ, the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe. And then we have to remember that it's connected to verse 20, that the power that he's talking about is the power that raised Jesus from the dead. And I know it goes on and it says it also raised him up and seated him in heavenly places. But I That's how much power he exerts on our behalf. That's the power that heals you. God wants you to get a bigger picture of him, of his power. He wants it to fill your imagination, your emotions, your spirit, your mouth, your thoughts. Hallelujah. Your healing is in that other realm. And your other realm and that realm is in you, the spirit. We looked at a verse in Job that God has set eternity in your heart. So the realm from which God, that God operates in and from which he raised the physical body of Jesus from the dead, that realm is in you. Hallelujah. As I was running the different versions of this Ephesians 1, especially verse 19, that you'd know the mighty power he exerted. This was a very interesting thing. Paul said, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us, word, who believe? In other words, God is exerting this power that raised Jesus from the dead toward us, to usward. Some of the other versions, I made a list of what they said. 
One was toward you. Other versions said in you, for you, among you, available to you, in to you, made available to you and works through you. So God's power is made available. We don't have to pray and beg God to give us the power, give us his power to heal us. Since Jesus has been raised from the dead and is seated at God's right hand, then he is your receipt. Today for a quickening. You need God's power tomorrow for a quickening. It doesn't dry up. The faucet doesn't go dry. God has made his power available toward you, in you, to you. The sickness wants to get so big and so, think that it is so powerful. See, this is, we're on a balance scale now. Two kinds of power. Two kinds of power we're talking about. And the weight of the sickness exerts a lot of power on your body and your mind and your emotions. We have to counterbalance that with meditations on God's power. And as the Lord told me, you'll never get beyond the realm of experiencing God's power that you're at right now until you meditate on his power some more. Some of us, we've experienced his power for being born again. We've experienced his power to give us joy, answer prayers, maybe about family members or jobs or different things like that. But now you're wanting to experience his power to heal your physical body. When I have been needing healing, I deliberately, deliberately put my, fill my mind, my emotions with thoughts of God's power. I quote verses to me about God's power. I, I, Pretend, I talk to you about pretending a lot. I pretend I'm there at the tomb. I see the earthquake taking place. I think about the power that caused the earthquake, just like I've talked to you about. I think about the power, the strength it took to roll away the stone. I think about how quickly God accomplished all of that. I think about the glorious body that Jesus had when he came out of the tomb, the immortal body that was put on in the twinkling of an eye. That's what we're going to get one day. But I think about God's power. Right now, see, even the story the Lord is telling me right now, think about the Old Testament when I made the axe head swim. Think about the strength, the power I exerted when I parted the Red Sea. Think how much power it took for me every day to provide manna to the children of Israel in the wilderness. Oh, think about the power that was behind, that I put behind the rock that David threw to kill Goliath. Oh, hallelujah. Think about the power exerted at the gate beautiful, Peter and John went to pray. They met a lame man on the way. Hallelujah. And when he stuck out his hand and asked for alms, this is what Peter did say. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. You know, the Lord challenged me the other day. He said, Go through the, the um, four Gospels in the book of Acts and tell me how many times a prayer was said before a healing took place. So, hmm. 
Now, I can't say I've done it yet, but right off, the only one that came to my mind was when Jesus stood before the tomb of Lazarus. At the gate beautiful, Peter didn't pray before he, the lame man was healed. He, I was thinking about Peter walking down the street and his shadow just fell on people and they were healed. I was thinking about Paul ministering to the man on the island of Miletus. It says Paul went and prayed for him, but Paul didn't pray to God and ask God to heal him. Paul went in there and spoke the healing prayer over him. He didn't have to ask God to heal because he knew that was one of the signs to follow them that believe. So anyway, that's another subject. <clears throat> Let's read a little more now about this wonderful power and this little prayer of Paul's. This is from the living. We covered it a little bit before and I'm not going to read all of it. Just portions of some of these that we've already previously read. I pray asking God, the glorious Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ to give you number one, spiritual wisdom, and number two, insight, so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts, and I looked up that word in the Greek, it means your way of thinking, your mind, your thoughts, your imagination. Oh, all of them need to get involved in your healing. Your way of thinking, your mind, your thoughts, your imagination. I pray that your mind, your way of thinking, your thoughts, your imagination will be flooded with light so that you can understand the hope given to those that God has called. I also pray that you will understand the oh, that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. The incredible greatness of God's power. Is it greater than the sickness and disease afflicting you? Of course it is. You can't help but answer yes to that question. See? But how much do we stay our, stay our minds on that phrase? The incredible greatness of God's power. It is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead. The Amplified says, I always pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you will begin to know what the immeasurable, unlimited, and surpassing greatness is of his active spiritual power in us who believe. You know, you may say, well, where is it? I don't feel it. See, let's read those words again. I pray that you will begin to know what the immeasurable, unlimited, and surpassing greatness is of God's active spiritual power in you. The immeasurable, unlimited, and surpassing greatness of God's active power in you. His immeasurable, unlimited, surpassing greatness of his power is in accordance with the working of his mighty strength, which he produced, which he produced in Christ when he raised him from the dead. The Passion Translation, I pray that the light of God will illuminate the eyes of your imagination. That's what the Passion, see, right here. It's where the problem's at. Faith is of your recreated spirit. It's the mind that is still not converted. It's unrenewed. It has to be educated of the 
immeasurable, surpassing greatness of God's active power at work in you. I pray that the light of God will illuminate the eyes of your imagination, flooding you with light. I pray that you will continually experience. Hmm. See, continually. That's where we're talking about living a life of wellness. Gordon Lindsay said, too many Christians just go from getting sick and healed, then to the next session, getting sick, getting healed, and they live that way. He said they need to go on from getting healed to living in wellness. But we don't think about it, and that isn't taught to us either. But I'm going to teach you about it, because I've done it. I pray that you will continually experience the immeasurable greatness of God's power made available to you through faith. This is the mighty power that was released when God raised Christ from the dead. Hallelujah. Then in the voice version, it sounds like Paul's praying here. Oh God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the anointed, Father of glory, I call out to you on behalf of your people. Give them minds ready to receive. Oh, put your hand on your head. Say, Father, give me a mind ready to receive. A mind. Boy, the mind just has the yow buts most of the time. Yow but this and yow but that. Oh. Father, give me a mind ready. Paul's praying. Give them minds ready to receive wisdom and revelation so they will truly know you. Open the eyes of their hearts, their minds, their understanding, their imagination, and let the light of your truth flood in. Shine your light on the hope you are calling them to embrace. Reveal to them the glorious riches you are preparing as their inheritance. Let them see the full extent of your power. Let them see the full extent of your power that is at work in those of us who believe. Oh, let them see the full extent of your power that is at work in those of us who believe. And may it be done according to your might and power. Then he's speaking to the Ephesians. Friends, this is the same might and resurrection power that he used in the anointed one to raise him from the dead and to position him at his right hand in the heavens. Oh, there is nothing over him. He, the one raised from the dead, the anointed, is above all rule, authority, power, and dominion, and over every name invoked. And the Lord said to me, isn't cancer a name? I said, yes, Lord, it is. He says, well, my name is over that name. I said, hmm, I see. And so, no more. I began to bring the name of cancer into subjection under the Lord's authority. And that broke the authority of cancer over me. These things, these words set them up as an authority over you. But if you're in the body of Christ, Jesus, whose name is above any the name of any illness you can be dealing with, is above that. So you have to get the authority right. He is over any name that you could be dealing with. It is not your Lord. He is your Lord. Sickness and disease is not your Lord. He is your Lord. He is above all rule, authority, power, and dominion, and over every name invoked. Every name invoked. You go to the doctor, the doctor says, you've got so-and-so. That's a name. Over every title bestowed in this age and next. Here's Ephesians 119 from some different versions, just to hit the highlights to expand how what this power is. Immeasurable. 
And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us? Another version, the overwhelming greatness of God's power that is working among us. This power is conferred, it's conferred upon you by the energy of God's powerful strength. Another one, how surpassingly great is the power that's working in us. It's the same mighty strength he used when he raised Jesus from the dead. Another one, the surpassing greatness of his power toward us. Another, the exceeding greatness of his power toward us. Another, what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us? What is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe? And what is the incomparable greatness of his power available for us? The Names of God version. You will also know the unlimited greatness. Paul's praying that you will know the unlimited greatness of God's power. Unlimited greatness of God's power. Say, well, my cancer has advanced so and so. God's power is can go beyond the extent to which the cancer has assaulted you. It went beyond death in the tomb when it raised Jesus from the dead. Whew. Glory to God. Names of God. You will also know the unlimited greatness of his power as it works, as it works with might and strength for us, the believers. Another one. How immeasurably great is the power that he has exercised toward those who have faith. Net Bible. And what is the incomparable greatness of his power? toward us who believe and as displayed in the exercise of his immense strength when he raised Christ from the dead. And you will know, this is NIRV, and you will know God's great power. It can't be compared with anything else. I love that one. He's praying, I pray that you will know the greatness of God's power and it can't be compared to anything else. So there is nothing in this world. Think of the strongest thing that you can think of in this world. Man-made man or whatever. Strongest thing. Even an earthquake in this world. And what does it say here? All that, all the power that you've ever said. Think of a rocket going up and breaking. This, the uh, grab, pull of gravity. God's power is so great that it can't be compared to anything else. And it is this power that works in us who believe. Hallelujah. <clears throat> NTE. And you will know the outstanding greatness of his power. The uh, Wycliffe, this is an ancient, old version from back in the 1600s, I think. He says, and which is the excellent greatness of his virtue, the excellent greatness of his virtue into us that have believed. And Young's literal, and what the exceeding greatness of his power to us who are believing. And as I went through, now you can go to the um, Bible Gateway. You can put in one verse and then down below you have the option where it says, see this version in all English translations or whatever version, whatever language that you're using. And it will pull up this verse in all different versions. That's where I've gotten these from. So I just went through and I tallied up the amount of times that certain words were used. The same power that raised Christ from the dead, exercised for you, was used 22 times. Among you, once. In you, 13 times. To you, 4 times. And toward you, 19 times available to work available to you 
and to work through you twice, to us word four times and into you once. In you and into you was for a total of 14 times and toward you is for a total of 23 times. So God is not withholding his power. Hallelujah. He is not withholding his power from you. What you need is in the answer to Paul's prayer. That he prayed, Father, God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the anointed, enlighten the eyes of their understanding, their minds, their thoughts, their imaginations, so that they would be able to comprehend with all the saints the great power that you exerted when you raised Jesus from the dead. Hallelujah. The power that multiplied the loaves and the fishes, that's coming to me right now. Think about the power that it took to multiply loaves and fishes and feed 5,000 people. You wonder, I just hear the question going through my mind, how can I meditate on God's power? Well, you can think about all these little examples I'm giving you. You can think about going through the Gospels when she the power of God. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And God said let there be light and there was. God brought order out of chaos. Hallelujah. So the Bible is a power book anyway. So stir yourself up and think, meditate on these power issues. You know another thing I was sharing in the previous part one, you are a dual realm person. I know you may be having pain in your body. Maybe some of you are taking treatments, you're taking medications, and it's hard to separate yourself from what's going on in your body. But you are capable of doing it. I think of the story I don't know the man's name right now, but he was in the concentration camp in solitary confinement, naked in a cold cell. But in his mind, he had been a great teacher of mathematics, I think it was, or geography. And in his mind, he would go back and he would start teaching the lessons again in his mind. He was in two rounds and he survived the concentration camp by doing that. So you're capable of that, of being a dual realm person and functioning in both realms. You're in the world, you're in this body, but you're not of it. You're a new creation. You've been born of God's spirit. You have his power towards you and in you. It's the power that raised Jesus from the dead. What it takes is some discipline on your part to set your mind, as Colossians 3 says, on things above. Now back to the plates and eating from umpteen different plates. The Lord gave us this prayer for a reason, because he wants you to think about what Paul is praying for you to experience. The power that raised Jesus from the dead. Hallelujah. It's all bottled up in your spirit right now because you wouldn't be born again. That's how you got born again. God exerted the power that he used to raise Jesus from the dead, his dead body. But God used the power to bring you out of spiritual death, which is worse when you got born again. So the power that is even greater than raising the body from death or from sickness and disease is already in you and it's the power that caused you to become a new creation and cause spiritual death to be eradicated from you and the nature of God's Zoe to come into you and that was all in the twinkling of an eye. Hallelujah. 
thinking about the power that raised Jesus from the dead. God wants you to eat. He wants us to eat from this. He wants you to pray in tongues and say, Father, bring me into the understanding of the power you exerted when you raised Jesus from the dead. And what the Holy Spirit will do, if you will pursue that, then he will take what you're learning and apply it to your situation. You'll think this and so and so, and the Holy Spirit will say, well, thus and so and thus and so. And you say, oh, I see that, Lord. Yeah, I believe that. I see that can happen. Yes, I see that my body isn't any worse off than Jesus was when it was in the tomb. You almost, it's like it says in Isaiah, come now let us reason together, says the Lord. I see myself a lot of times reasoning myself into healing. That's kind of what I do. Whenever I have an issue going on, I start reasoning with the scriptures. Now, wait a minute. That'll be my first question. Now, wait a minute. What does the word of God say about this? The word of God says, by his stripes I'm healed. Okay, then how do I approach this situation? Well, first of all, I approach it as a new creation. Well, what kind of, as a spirit, not a, not a physical body. It's attacking my physical body, but I am a spirit. What kind of spirit am I? Well, according to 2 Corinthians 5.17, I'm a new creation. And who is that new creation? According to Galatians 2.20, it's no longer I that lives, but it's Christ that lives within me. And the life that I now live in this flesh that's having a problem, I am living by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And the Lord told me, he said, send Jesus' faith out against the problem. Hallelujah. Send Transaction. As you meditate, the transaction starts taking place. We just don't stick with one plate long enough to really see results. I've seen that. The seed does not get deep enough. Like Immediately, the devil comes with and maybe aggravates the symptoms in your body to choke out what I've just shared with you. That's his intention. So you have to deliberately work with what I'm sharing with you. And what I'm sharing is not something that I've made up. I have no notes. I have nothing. I'm just sharing what I have seen and heard and experienced. Now I'm sharing it unto you. Hallelujah. <clears throat> In closing now, I want to read a final reading here of this section of scripture from the Message Bible. This is uh, Ephesians 1, 15 through 23. That's why when I heard of the solid trust you have in the Master Jesus and your outpouring of love to all the followers of Jesus, I couldn't stop thanking God for you every time I prayed. I'd think of you and give thanks. But I do more than thank. I ask. I ask the God of our Master, Jesus Christ, the God of glory, to make you intelligent and discerning in knowing him personally. Your eyes this, the eye of your mind focused and clear so that you can see distinctly what it is he is calling you to do. That you can grasp the immensity, this immensity of this glorious way of life. The glorious way of life he has for his followers. And oh, the utter extravagance of his work in us who trust him. Oh, 
the utter extravagance of his work in us who trust him. Oh, it is endless energy and boundless strength. Hallelujah. Eight. Hang on a minute. Got to get my pages together here. <clears throat> All this energy issues from Christ. I thought that was interesting what they said. All this energy is now issuing from Christ because he's the head of the church through whom it's being administered. God raised him from death and set him on a throne deep in deep heaven in charge of running the universe. Everything from galaxies to governments, no name and no power exempt from his rule. And not just for the time being, but forever. He is in charge of it all and has the final word on everything. At the center of all this, Christ rules the church. The church, you see, is not peripheral to the world. The world is peripheral to the church. <laughs> Hear that? The church is not an add-on to the world. The world is an add-on to the church. It's on the outside realm of the church. The church is Christ's body in which he speaks and acts and by which he fills everything with his presence. Hallelujah. When you think about the power that raised Jesus from the dead, you are filling yourself with the presence of God. You're talking about a subject that God enjoys. <laughs> You're like Adam. You're walking and talking in the cool of the day with the Father. He likes that kind of language. He likes that kind of conversation. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh. Philemon 1.6 I want to share with you too before I go. Except it says that as you acknowledge every good thing that is in you, in Christ. I think of all the things in, that are good are in Christ and Christ is in me. It's like those little dolls that sit inside each other. So all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are in Christ and Christ is is in me and as I acknowledge what is in me it says then my faith becomes effectual in its working sometimes we're not seeing results because we're not energizing our faith exciting our faith stirring up our faith by acknowledging this mighty power that raised Jesus from the dead that is in us, that is full, flowing toward us, and that wants to flow out of us, work through us, work for us, work in us. Hallelujah. Begin to put your hand on your belly and say the power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in me. Hallelujah. I encourage you when I post these Notes, download them into your phone or print them off and read through these verses for yourself. What I have taught you or shared with you tonight in this bedtime story does not become yours just by listening. Hallelujah. You're now the farmer that has to take what God is giving us here and get it deep down in your ground so that it brings forth the healing fruit that you're desiring. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to just pray. I typed out a little prayer. I know I normally just pray spontaneously, but I just typed out this little prayer to go with my notes I want to share. Father, I now pray for those listening and studying this wonderful revelation that you are making the same power available to work for, in, and toward them that you exerted when you raised your son from the dead. Father, this mighty power destroyed the chains of death and quickened his body with immortal life. 
you give us and minister to and in us this power to save, heal, deliver, and restore us. I pray for anyone who needs healing to drink deeply. I pray for you, viewer, listener, I pray for you to drink deeply of this revelation of the resurrection power that is with you and flowing to you by the Holy Spirit. Father, I thank you that even now, those who have listened, those who will listen, and those who will give themselves to meditating on this reality because your word does not lie. I thank you, Father, that this power is at work in we who believe and that you are pouring it out toward us, Father. And I pray that each one will sense the quickening, Father, in their mind, in their emotions, their hope being stirred, Father, their body, Father, sensing the hope that is its because your power is available to heal it. Oh, Father, I thank you for it. Help them to realize that they're a spirit, that they're a recreated spirit, that they're a dual realm person, and that they have the power to speak the creative word to their body as a spirit, just as you as a spirit did when you created this material world. Oh, Father, I pray for the spirit of wisdom and revelation to flow through these bedtime stories, Father. And I pray. For those that hear them, to be faithful to what they've heard. Father, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. <laughs> Unless the Lord happens to change it, the next bedtime story we're going to talk about an artesian spring. Jesus said, I will put within you a well of water springing up unto everlasting life. An artesian spring, artesian well. But you're going to enjoy that. God bless you all. You know what's in that well? Power springing up in you. Glory to God. Good evening. Sweet dreams and go to sleep thinking about the power of God. <laughs>